All right, we're going to continue the idea of confidence intervals, only this time, unlike the last section where we were talking just about confidence intervals dealing with proportions, that was like a percentage base, like how, what proportion of people have long hair, what proportion of this is, is some parameter that you were, you were talking about, we come up with the, the interval. We're now going to go ahead and use confidence intervals to estimate population mean. So are we dealing with P anymore? <coughs> New. That was, what did P stand for? Proportion. Proportion for the population. What's P hat? Sample proportion. Great, okay. So the sample proportion was P hat and population proportion was P. That was for the last section. Right now we're dealing with mean. Population mean, that's our, our mu. So when we say mu, we're population mean. Here's what you need for this. what you need. Number one, just like any other type of math that we, any work that we do in statistics, you got to assume you're starting with a random sample. That's pretty much, I mean, everywhere you see that. So, of course, we're going to have a random sample. If it doesn't say it, it's assumed to be a random sample. Number two, hey, do you remember the symbol for the population standard deviation? I hope so. Population standard deviation. What's the symbol for population standard deviation? Sigma. It looks like a cannon. It's a cannon. Yeah. Population standard deviation, that sigma, is assumed to be known. So somewhere in your paper, it's going to tell you the population standard deviation, or it's going to say, assume the population, listen to the words I'm saying to you right now, I know you write stuff down, but it's going to say these words, assume the population standard deviation is blank. Okay? That's going to be a very, very important piece of information for you, because in the next section, you're not going to know this, and we're going to have to do something different. Are you with me on that? Well, we're not there yet, but this right here is a huge piece of information. This is going to key you in onto whether you do a z-score, which we're going to do right now, or a t-score, which I have never talked about before. That's the next section, okay? So right now we have a couple branches of, of statistics. You've got, on the one hand, here's my one hand, you've got proportions. We've already dealt with proportions, right? Go yes. Did you just do homework on proportions? You looked up z-scores, didn't you? Confidence intervals, z-scores. You do only one thing for proportions. If you have proportions, there's only one thing that you do, and you just master that in your homework. You got it? The other hand is means. In means over here, you've got two scenarios. You've got sigma, population standard deviation is known. You're going to do one thing. You've got population standard deviation is unknown. You do another thing. You with me on that? So there, there's pretty much three scenarios. Proportions, all the same. Mean, differences. Standard deviation known, standard deviation unknown. We're dealing with the known right now. Right here, this is in 7.3, 7.4, we'll deal with unknown, okay? You guys get the kind of the, the general idea there? So proportions, bank that away. You do one thing for por proportions, this is not gonna cross over whatsoever. Now we have means. Same idea as a confidence interval, so I'm not gonna spend so much time talking about why we do intervals and all that. I covered all that before. Now we're just gonna do the nitty gritty of how we make these confidence intervals to estimate our population mean. That's what this section is all about. And it stems on these three principles. First one, random sample, no problem. Second one, you know the sigma. You know the population standard deviation. And the third one, you've seen this before also. There was a magic number for n. By the way, what does n stand for again? You should all know this. Number of trials, that was for proportions. Or number of trials or sample size. That's right, you should all know that. N stands for sample size. So, and there was a magic number, it had to be bigger than what? 30. Very good, yeah, it had to be bigger than 30. If it wasn't bigger than 30, there was another thing that you could have up there that allowed you to have a sample size of less than or equal to 30, but still be able to do this z-score stuff. What was that? What's, nor what's normally distributed, though? The data. Okay, so the... the 
that it comes from a population that's normally distributed. Do you guys remember those those key pieces right here that uh, n was bigger than 30? If you if you had that, no problem. You can do whatever you want as far as the d score. If n wasn't bigger than 30, you had to have a statement. The population is normally distributed. Those things are, are, are key. You with me so far? Okay. Now we also talked about this word point estimate. Yep, back to normal. <laughs> And my one shot at glory. I was on the edge of glory. <coughs> <laughs> That's the only time in the history of the world I will ever use a Lady Gaga. <laughs> ever. Okay. We also talked about a point <laughs> estimate. I'm on the edge of glory. The sad part is I hear that at the gym every single freaking day, and it drives me absolutely up a wall. Because I like it. I hate that. Anyway, point estimate. A point estimate was a single value from a sample that was used to represent the population. Do you remember that? P hat was the point estimate for P. Can you do a little thinking outside the box here and think, what's the point estimate going to be for mu? Mu is the population mean, right? Right? What's the point estimate going to be for mu? p-hat was a point estimate for p. Why? Because p-hat came from a sample. p was from a population. Of course, what you're trying to do is get a uh, piece of information, a statistic from a sample that's being used to represent a population. Are you with me on the idea of a point estimate? You absolutely must know what a point estimate is. If I say point estimate and you're like, I don't know, well, you're, you're out of the loop right now, folks. You're, you're, you're out of it. Um, you're out the game. Took you out the game with that. All right? So if I say point estimate, you've got to know that's a value from a statistic one single value being used to represent a population proportion or a population mean or a population some value of that. Uh, of course, we don't use those because we don't know how accurate they are. We have no way to say I'm certain amount confident. That's why we have a common central idea in the first place. You remember that? Watch 7.2 again. So here, when we used p hat to represent p, what are you going to use to represent mu? What does mu stand for? Mean for what? Population or sample? definitely a population. So we want something that is the same thing as this, only based on a sample. What do you use? XR. What's that? XR. Clearly, yeah. What's X bar stand for? Stand for a mean, right? What type of mean? Does it seem, does it seem reasonable that we're going to use the sample mean as a point estimate to represent the population mean? I hope so. It's just a sample mean. We say, oh yeah, take from your sample. That's going to be your best guess. It's the single value that's, that you're going to assume is closest to your population mean. How accurate is it going to be? I don't know. That's why we do a confidence interval, because I don't know how good that is. But it's, a, it's where we start. Just like p hat represented the point estimate for p. Remember that from 7.2, right? That's what you did your homework on. x bar is going to be the point estimate for mu. Okay, again, why we use those conference intervals, we, we really do not have an idea about how good this is going to be as an estimate for this thing. That's why we give a range of data. We say, okay, I, I know this isn't going to be exactly accurate, but I'm going to give a range of data to which I'm a certain level of confidence, uh, confident that the actual value of mu is going to fall in that range. Do you remember the idea for that point estimate? Same basic principle. We're making up a range to which we're going to be a certain level of confidence that the actual value of our population parameter, in this case a, a mean, is going to fall in that range. What was the most common confidence levels, by the way? 90%. Great. What was the next one? And? Did you have those z-scores memorized? What were those z-scores called again? It wasn't called a z-score. It was called a critical value. Yeah. Those critical values, 
that's going to work the same as, this, as, as last time. Okay, so those critical values you memorized, they're still valid because we're still going to be using a Z critical value. Why are we using a Z? Because of this and because of this. This lets us use a Z critical value. So, without further ado, let's get right on down to the margin of error. Do you remember what letter represents the margin of error? <laughs> Very good. Now, of course, we're not dealing with a proportion anymore, so we're not going to have any more P hat, Q hat garbage. Uh, that was from the last section. But we are going to have the exact same formula. I want you to see this is kind of cool. The exact same formula with just different letters. I want you to think back to, don't, don't write this, well, you can write this <laughs> if you want to, but I'm going to change it. Think back to the last section. You had this. True? Okay. And what this was... What this was essentially, let's see if I can do my math right, uh, was, what was standard deviation for that? Was that PQN? Yeah, it was. This is basically Z alpha over 2 square root P hat Q hat over square root of N. Sure. What we're going to do is take this part of it, leave it alone, take this part of it and represent it, but not with proportions, but now with our mean and with our standard deviation. So instead of this being our margin of error, our margin of error looks really similar. It's still a z alpha over 2. We still have a standard deviation, very similar to that, and we still have a square root of n. It's, it's not exactly the same, but it's very similar. This right here is your margin of error for doing confidence intervals to try to represent your population mean when your sigma is known. Why does a sigma have to be known? Well, look at the formula. Where's sigma? Oh, it's right there. You've got to know it. If you don't know it, then you can't use the formula. So similar idea as this thing, just looks a little bit different. So our, our E, our margin of error, still represents the maximum difference between our point estimate and our population parameter. So in other words, it still estimates, uh, it still says the maximum difference between this number and what this one is. So it's going to still give us a range. So E is, let's say it one more time, critical value, sigma over the square root of n. What that means is if, if E is still the maximum difference between X bar and mu, do you, do you believe me that, that that's true? That's what the margin of error was actually defined to be. It's based on a certain level of confidence. So, for instance, if we use 90%, our, what's our Z value for 90%? Critical value? 1 point for 90%. 1.645. How about 95%? What was it? That's yeah, the most common one. And then for 99%, it was? That's still giving you more range the more confident that you, you want to be, right? That's how, it's, that's how you signify how confident.